Hello. This COBOL is a powerful development and deployment framework with a two-step compile process. Step one is to read your COBOL program and create Java code. Step two is to use the Java compiler to compile your code into a Java class. Now the most common benefit of this is to allow COBOL programmers to continue to program in COBOL while still getting the benefits of running in the modern Java environment. But another option is to convert your COBOL code to Java and leave your COBOL behind. You would keep and maintain and continue to develop your programs all in Java. This is a pretty good solution for batch COBOL applications. But for some COBOL to Java tools, this isn't a viable solution. Unlike is COBOL's Java code, the code these tools generate is too complex and difficult to work with. Because COBOL isn't an object-oriented language, and Java is, there's some COBOL syntax that doesn't have a direct equivalent to Java. A good example of this is the go-to statement. Unlike many COBOL to Java converters, with IsCOBOL, 100% of your code is rewritten to Java, not just the easy parts. You don't have to change any of your COBOL code first, and none of the logic will be changed or removed. The Java that IsCOBOL writes is typical Java code. It's similar to handwritten Java. It's high quality, maintainable code without sacrificing any functionality of the original code. In addition to this COBOL to Java compatibility, we focus on performance. This is another area in which most COBOL to Java migrations fail. Memory usage is significantly different, and performance tuning can be tedious and difficult, so we do it for you. With this COBOL, you can migrate your code in stages because the Java and COBOL will work together seamlessly. And to help the Java programmer with the interaction between Java and COBOL, IsCobol contains tools to create Java stub programs that help them map to data and classes and call statements. Well, let me show you what I mean. I have a COBOL program called GetCust. It has a linkage section where you pass a customer code in and you get the customer record back. It's using ESQL to get this data from, in my case, an Oracle database, but it doesn't matter which database. And the data that we're trying to get is here, A5 is the customer number, status A, customer's name is Adrian Anderson. So the code declares a cursor, opens it, fetches the next record. When I compile this, it will compile to Java code, but in addition to that, I would like to use the easy linkage tool to create a Java bridge class that will call the getCust program. It'll have an object for each linkage section data item and a method named run. So in my configuration file, I've turned easy linkage on. When I build the project, I now get my Java that I expected. And under easy linkage here, I get my bridge class. Let's compare the two codes for getCust. And here's the declare cursor in COBOL, and here it is in Java. And then we have an open. Here's our open. And we also have our fetch here, generated from this COBOL code. Now that I have my Java, I have a Java project down here. I'm going to bring my Java down, and then I'm done with the COBOL project. Now if I wanted to, I could switch over to the Java perspective. We are. And I wrote a small program that will create an instance of the linking, the bridge program, defines the variables, and it sets the input to A5. That's the record we want to get. And then invokes the run method. So I'll build that. And we run it with this run configuration. Under arguments, are the iscobol arguments needed to access the Oracle database? And the iscobol.jar is important to include. And when I run this, we get our A5 record for Adrian Anderson. 
I mentioned that converting from COBOL to Java can be done gradually with the COBOL and Java programs working together. In this case, the Java programmer will need a way to pass data back and forth to the COBOL data file. COB file IO is the tool to use for this. It generates object-oriented COBOL programs, which when compiled to classes, give the Java programmer this access. A data record is managed as an object with set and get accessor methods for each elementary field. The individual record fields are accessed using Java data types. The set methods automatically perform data validation and they throw customizable exceptions. Cobb file IO also generates Java code for these customizable exceptions. So we're going to do that now. Now from a COBOL programmer's perspective, they may be working in the command prompt like this and they may have some data like that. And they'll have a COBOL program that will include the file description and the fields. So the first thing the COBOL programmer wants to do is create an extended file description for that file. And you do that by compiling the program with an EFD switch. This creates a file called file1.xml. It's an XML format and it's the extended file description. Now we can call Cobb file IO and pass it that XML file. And the dash E switch will tell it to create those Java customizable exceptions as well. So now we have two new COBOL programs, file1file file and file1rec. And we also have five exception stubs. The next step is to use the Java compiler to compile those exception classes because our COBOL, file one file and file one rec depend on those. And then we're going to compile those two new programs. And that results in a bunch of classes. Next, I want to make the Java doc. And I want to move the exception source code, my Java, source code to my Java project and the Java doc there as well. Now the COBOL programmer is done and we'll switch over to the IDE. I have another Java project and I'll refresh. This is all the code that I've moved as well as the Java doc. I've written a small program that creates an instance of the file one file and then opens the file and then another of the file one rec and we're going to read the file. And this is set to get the second record of the data file. Now remember this is a COBOL data file. Let's take a look at that. Point to the data here and the extended file description. Now it's reading that COBOL data file and there are two records. There's one and there's record number two. So we're going to try to get this record number two with our Java program. And then it's just going to print out the code and the first and last name. Let's look at the run configuration. And again, the important piece is the arguments. In this case, we need to point to the data file for is COBOL. And, and we also need to make sure that the iscobol.jar is included. So I'm going to run this. There's our code over here, number two. It's an easy matter to change this to get the first record. Let's run it. And there's your first record. So that's a short demonstration of the value of iscobol. When you want to move your COBOL code to Java and perhaps keep it there. If you have any questions, please contact us at the information on the screen or email us at support at variant.com. Thank you.